Two years ago, an Arden Hills murder led to an international manhunt. Ty Hoffman gunned down his ex-partner in broad daylight. Hoffman used to run the Minneapolis bar Lush, which was owned by the victim. Kelly Phillips. So where was Hoffman hiding during that month-long manhunt? Tonight, for the first time, we're seeing surveillance video that shows the gunman hiding in plain sight at some of the most popular spots in the metro. Here's Fox 9's Ted Haller. The blatantness of what he did out there in front of God and everyone in front of the public. Lighter, short hair. And he committed an execution right there in the gas station with plenty of witnesses around. He was, was a was white male. I, I, I think he was about my height. We will definitely figure out. I don't know if you've heard that uh, a man hunt looking for you. It took more than a month for police to capture Ty Hoffman in the hunt for the man who killed his ex-partner in broad daylight at an Arden Hills gas station. Police searched the Anoka County Airport once, twice, three times. Searched Prior Lake Woods. There were wanted posters, a reward. The search was international. A Canadian cabin surrounded. The U.S. Embassy in Belize notified. We thought he was an organized, detailed man and had a plan, but obviously he didn't have a plan. Police still don't know where Hoffman was for most of the days, but for some of the time, they know exactly where he was. Target, Mall of America, Mystic Lake Casino. He was hiding in plain sight. After three weeks of searching, police had few clues other than locating the BMW of the victim, Kelly Phillips. After the murder, Hoffman drove off in the car, abandoning it in the woods in Blaine and giving investigators an area to focus the search. Still, no signs of Hoffman until August 31st. This is surveillance video of Hoffman robbing a Blaine TCF bank of more than $12,000. Investigators say the robbery was key for two reasons. It showed Hoffman was still in the area and he was still potentially very dangerous. On the video, it shows him taking a deep breath and then pulling out that firearm and pointing at the, at the teller and demanding money. You could just see that, oh, you know, took a deep breath and pulled it out. Ramsey he County he Deputy Dan Eggers was the lead investigator. He's been with the sheriff's office for 27 years. This is probably one of my bigger cases that I've ever worked. In fact, it is my biggest one. The day after the bank robbery, Hoffman would spend almost every second of his day in public. And for the first time, we're not just learning what Hoffman was doing that day, we're seeing him hide in plain sight. 9.50 a.m., the Richfield Target. Hoffman walks in wearing a shirt, likely stained with the dye pack from the robbery, and a small black backpack. A half hour later, he walks out wearing a gray shirt and a different backpack. Inside, he bought a razor, the new clothes, and a cell phone. Do you know who he planned to call? No idea. It was a brand new phone that had never been turned on. The, the uh, battery was still in the original packaging. Hoffman checks out, changes in the men's room, and leaves. 12.14 p.m. Cameras pick him up, still in Richfield, boarding the Metro Transit bus at 66th and Cedar. He pays, takes a seat, and rides the bus to the Mall of America. 12.21 p.m. Cameras show Hoffman walking all around the mall by hundreds of people on multiple floors including the main rotunda. I mean, he wandered around the mall for about three hours. Any idea what he was doing? Oh, he went and watched a movie. The most wanted man in Minnesota bought a ticket to see the young adult movie, The Giver. Is it your belief he had the gun in his backpack while he was at the Mall of America? It's possible. At one point, Hoffman was just yards away from two police officers. As he gets into a cab at the mall, it appears he checks to see if the officers noticed him. They did not. The next stop was the Mystic Lake Casino. 3.45 p.m. Hoffman arrives and investigators believe this security guard challenges him on his backpack. The guard does not search it. 
Hoffman leaves and comes back 15 minutes later and allows his backpack to be searched. Was that a missed opportunity by security there? Uh, I believe it was. He spends the next couple of hours mostly playing slot machines at Mystic Lake and Little Six Casinos, getting rid of the stolen bills stained by red dye. He buys some food at the convenience store. There was a wanted poster. There was a reward being offered. He was the top story on the news during that month. How could no one at the mall or the casino have spotted him? Well, I believe everybody's in their own little world about, you know, they're just doing their shopping, minding their own business. 10.50 p.m. Hoffman vanishes in Shakopee. Police don't realize he was at Mystic Lake until the next day when the stained bills were found. I think the closest we came to him was probably at the casino. I know that it was turning cold at that time, and that was plain to our advantage. In fact, the day that he was caught, I had a feeling this is the day. This is uh, one month exactly, and lo and behold, he turns up at uh, Arby's in, in Shakopee. Hoffman was arrested after someone spotted him standing in the Shakopee Arby's drive through I think what got him was uh, uh, it was starting to turn cold. That's, you know, he basically gave up by going to the Arby's drive drive through to order a meal. Investigators know where Hoffman was when he was on camera, but still don't know for sure about the majority of the time he was off camera. Where was he sleeping? I believe he was sleeping in the woods at some point. He might have had access to a, a house. Um, he very well could have broken into a, a foreclosed house and, and stolen a, uh, a remote control for a garage opener. One of the key unanswered questions is where a garage door remote Hoffman had came from. Another unanswered question, help. Do you think Hoffman was getting help while he was on the loose? That's inconclusive right now. Um, not that I can prove. And finally, the murder weapon, the gun also used in the bank robbery. It's still missing. I think he was uh, probably planning on, if he was going to commit this act, I think he was planning on committing suicide. But when it came down to brass tacks of actually doing that, um, I don't think he could go through with that, that option. So I don't, that's why I think he didn't have a plan. And about that missing gun, the Ramsey County Attorney's Office told me Hoffman offered to divulge the location in exchange for a shorter sentence. Prosecutors declined, and same with federal prosecutors in the bank robbery sentence. He's in prison after pleading guilty to the murder as well as the bank robbery. Well, a lot of the focus of this story is about Ty Hoffman, but what about Kelly Phillips, and how is his family doing? Yeah, and that's the most important story here, and you know, I've got, I spoke to his parents just today. I've gotten to know some of his friends. He was this amazing, generous, kind guy. He had this fancy lawyer job at Boston Scientific, but he would make time to fly his parents to Mexico every single year, do all kinds of favors for his friends, involved in all kinds of causes. So I know it is accurate to say the, the hole that is left behind here mm -hmm. It's only growing larger with yeah. time. I remember when it happened, how devastated that close circle of friends and family were by his loss. Yeah. It was amazing how many friends he had and how strong each one of those relationships was. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember that very well. Such a tragedy. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Ted.